So, in the case of the Fukushima nuclear accident, what happened is that huge amounts of radioactive gases and radioactive dust have been sent into the atmosphere. So, depending on the wind direction, some of those radioactive particles in the air, let's say sort of cloud, arrived uh, in areas which are even 100 kilometers away from Fukushima. So, at this time, the radiation which are emitted by these particles increase the amount of counts per second or the dose rate level in microsievert per hour. It's increasing. In addition, people are breathing this radioactive, this radioactive dust and radioactive gases. But then, even if the wind blows away those radioactive clouds, some of the particles have been able to, to let down on the ground. It's called a contamination of the ground. This is due to gravitation. The particles just come down and then they create an irradiation because those particles are radioactive. We are speaking about cesium-137, cesium-134, iodine-131. They are now on the soil and they will increase the count per second, the dose rate in microsievert per hour for a long time depending on their own half-life. For example, iodine-131 has a half-life of eight days. It means that after eight days, the amount of radiation will be divided by two, but it will take five, it will, but it will take eight more days to have it divided by four. So, this contamination will decrease, but only very progressively. And for some other nuclides, like cesium-137, whose half-life is 30 years, the contamination will last very long, in fact, for decades. So it's very important to use radi radiation meters to check the level of radiation in the air in order to decide if the people have to be evacuated or if they can stay at those locations.